hey what's up guys uh, rajesh here again uh, welcome back to another uh, episode of uh, learning market and market triggers for now uh, we'll be talking about various different different uh, functionalities in a short videos 5 10 15 minutes max uh, so that we can uh, you know go watch a video learn about something next day come back and watch another video and learn something about market or thereby learning more and more as we go along rather than one long eight hour kind of class so just hoping that uh, a new marketer users get uh, uh, the information they seek easily and more digestible fashion anyway uh, rajesh here again welcome back uh, we're gonna talk about today about a list related triggers um, and so let's talk about it uh, so there are something called list in marketo uh, what is a list a list is like a membership list let's say your friends list right you have friends uh, whose name is John, Peter, Melissa, and whatnot, right? They are nothing common other than they being your friends, right? So list is more like a membership field. You want to uh, group certain people in your market or persons in market or leads, contacts, whatever it is, no matter which company you work for or any other criteria, whether their email address have this domain, that domain, whether they were created yesterday, last year, 10 years back, whatnot. Nothing common cat as a, you can't write a query as such to identify them, but they're just membership. You just add them to a list or remove from a list or maintain them in the list or import into a list and thing like that. So that's called a list. Now, many times um, we use lists in market or to, uh, as a part of our programs, let's say all the people who uh, register for a webinar, you, um, you add them to a list of registrants yeah, and, and call that name a list, a registrants list. And all the people who attended uh, that webinar, you call them and maintain them into attended webinar. Not that you have to do that because that you can do it very much very using smart list, but you know, sometimes you want to maintain that in a list also. Thing, uh, things like that you might use this for. Uh, another use of lists is if you are importing, let's say you have a third party application, a service maybe, uh, who are who you are getting lists uh, or are leads imported from or they are you know content syndication uh, kind of uh, service partners and they are cre creating new leads in your marketo database behind the scene using uh, marketo apis and just uh, rather than dumping all the leads in the all contacts and you don't have any way to go to find out how many leads they created you give them a list name and ask them to create all their list leads into that list so at any time you log into market and see oh there are 55 leads they created so far tomorrow you come and there are 57 so yesterday they created two more thing like that and maybe uh, you wanted to you know when the new lead is created by that kind of service you want to take certain actions and that's where you get uh, things like um, this kind of trigger to be used so add it to list um, just drag that add it to list into that and you can just listen to a list by name maybe you have a bunch of lists and you basically just say RT invite list. Maybe that was my list I wanted to send. Um, RT stands for Rajesh Talele, but uh, uh, I wanted to send out an invite, let's say, and you can just listen to that, or you can, um, so, and you can do something, maybe you maybe want to, you want to change data value and may something source, person sources, something, blah, blah. Something like that you can do let's say and you know you may want to do something like that or a uh, thing like that or you want to say hey you know what i don't know which list i used or whatnot but any list contains rt it's basically the list i want to treat that way and you can have contents again starts with contains not starts with and is any if you maybe you want to write a program which anybody gets added to any list you want to trigger something not so much that you will use it but sometimes you may and that's, uh, you know, it's, it's just that market will have that power if you need to have something like that. And you can do that uh, using that. But you said, okay, that, that sounds good. But I want to have additional, like, constraint, like, as I said, uh, I have, I don't have one content syndication or whatever. I have multiple. And unfortunately, I give the same list then to them, all of both of them. Ideally, I wouldn't suggest to do that. I would give different listening to different people so that there's no cross contamination and nobody we can clearly tell who was the source of that lead clearly very very quickly but sometimes it can happen so you can actually go by the source 
anything like that. Or you can actually also check for uh, a source field in addition to a trigger. You can also check for maybe a field called, and you can do that. You can add a person source maybe, and you can have a filter and person sources um, something like that, and they can check that way as such. But you can you can do all that, but that's not the topic. I mean, you can always learn about it, and we can make another video about how to combine and all those advanced filters and all that. But that's the concern about that add filter, add to list. And again, we have those two usual date of activity, when it happened and all that, and how many times it happened, which kind of sometimes redundant for trigger especially, but uh, it is still there. I mean, it's there as because it's a core kind of functionality and we may not need to use it um, for this trigger as such. But the other one is, um, uh, so that's about the add to add it to list and so whenever somebody gets added to a list this flow will happen similarly we also have removed from a list maybe uh, you know you have a waiting list and uh, so when somebody submits uh, or fills out a form or something you put them in a waiting list because you only have 20 people but you know you have 35 people waiting for it uh, you put them in the waiting list but then when there's a, a place available, you take one of the first one out from that list, waiting list, let's say manually, just, I'm just making a business case, uh, and remove from that list and add it to a different list, which is Aquel. And when you remove somebody from that waiting list, you want something to happen. And that's what you will do something like, uh, maybe you have multiple of them. Yeah. So you do something like this, list name contents or starts with waiting and uh, that's how you will do so it's again removed from list is when somebody gets removed from a list what should what flow should happen and that's pretty much it again we have source what is removing because you can do it manually you can have a market or program do it a smart campaign do it or you can have a api call uh, done by some external program or service to talk to market one to remove somebody from the list uh, so it so you can you can selectively target what removed that person from that list and to treat it differently. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it about add and remove from list. Uh, it's a rather short video, but uh, it just I uh, just wanted to keep it granular and simple. Uh, if you have any questions or any use cases you want to implement but not sure how to, let me know. Uh, use the comment section if you have any questions or feedback. Let me know in the comment section too. And uh, please subscribe to this video and this channel because I will be adding uh, more and more videos every day, every uh, week if not every day and will uh, like to do my part in uh, being a good member of Marketo community and uh, hoping to see you soon in one of the Marketo sessions or Marketo user groups. Take care.